Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Daryl Eklund, the managing editor over at Motocross Action Magazine. In front of us, we got the 2020, you would say in a half, Husqvarna FC 450 Rockstar Edition. As you see, this bike looks a lot like, you say, Jason Anderson's and with number 15, Dean Wilson's factory FC 450. But in reality, it's kind of a gloss over version of their bikes. From the stock version from last year, usually the factory editions, or the Rockstar editions, they have a lot of updates to them. As far as we know, there's not really much different from either the 2020 version or even last year's Rockstar Edition. They had the cool clamps, pro tapered bars, the FMF slip-on exhaust, blue hubs, blue spoke nipples, the Husqvarna hole shot device, they had the front disc guard, the recluse side case cover. The real update is to the suspension. Uh, we're not sure exactly what they did to it, um, we're going to find on their presentation in a few minutes and hopefully we have some other updates we can give to you because right now it's just a glossed over 2020 Husqvarna FC 450. We have Josh Moser now here and myself. We're going to get on the track, spin a bunch of laps, trying to shake this thing down so we can give you an in-depth look through our eyes with the Rockstar Edition FC 450. So stay tuned. Hey, we're back. As you can tell, Josh and I put some time on the rough Glen Helen track. Obviously this morning, when you're watching Josh, it was nice and smooth. The graphics are worn off it. Josh is usually really hard on this kind of stuff. Poor Decal Works has to keep on printing this stuff out. We had Jody and myself. We went to the, the meeting with uh, Andy Jefferson and the suspension guys there to really figure out what is changed. Before, in the beginning, I said it was really what we knew was the suspension. As far as performance is considered, it's the suspension and the linkage. And when I say linkage, it's, this, it's structurally the same. The only thing that are different are the seals. They have SKF seals that really, if you feel it, uh, both of them back to back, you feel a much bigger difference in how smooth everything is. It doesn't sound like a big difference, but you actually can feel it on the track. As far as the forks, it gets really technical, the things they made on the forks. I won't get into that. For our test in the June issue, we'll have the technical breakdown of every little thing they changed in the forks. It's just, it's, it's really a lot. Uh, as you know, last year for the 2020 FC 450, uh, actually the whole Husqvarna motocross line, the suspension settings were soft. I mean, really soft. It wasn't just middle of the road. That soft. Vet riders love these settings. They didn't, they didn't like jumps. It didn't like hitting stuff hard. It didn't like it with pro riders on it. So for this year, or at least for the Rockstar Edition, the settings are middle of the road. And actually, this year, the KTM Factory Edition, as well as the Rockstar Husky Edition, the suspension settings are identical. So they're not different this year, they're identical. So when we test the KTM next Wednesday, we're gonna have the same, pretty much the same feedback for you for that bike as far as suspension settings. But what we did, the, set, the settings were very close. The great thing is, we didn't have to make many adjustments. We went softer on the compression, but as far as the air pressure, we left at 10.9 bar. And that is 0.4 bar stiffer than initial stock setting for this bike due to the stiff front end. And what makes this front end stiff is these triple clamps. Back in 2016, when the frame was different, you had this slap down sensation, which made it really harsh. And I had that same sensation with this, and I really do not like it because it makes it feel like the forks just don't move. So initially, I, had to, I went softer on the compression, and that really helped me with that feel. They started us 0.4 bar softer, and that was just way too soft for me. I was bombing out, same with Josh. When I first got on the track and I was riding like 60%, it felt really good. It felt super plush. The REM track out here with no jumps, not really big bumps, it would be amazing. So for a vet novice, vet, even vet intermediate, around 180 pounds, maybe 190, it would be a completely great fork setup. For me, for Josh, pro level rider, obviously lighter than I am, but faster, we had to go with, stay with the stock setting and go a little softer on the compression. As far as the shock's concerned, me and Josh both like the shock right out of the box. 
The only thing that we didn't like, it squatted a little bit too much coming out of the corners when you got on the gas. So we went a quarter turn stiffer on the high speed and that really fixed that sensation. Unfortunately, there's a downfall there. On square edge, it started being a little more harsh. So with everything here, there's a, there's a give and take. And that's what's hard. This is not KYB SSS suspension. I can't have my cake and eat it too. And I really don't like that. I want the best of both worlds. I can't have it soft and plush and then jump big jumps and not bottom out. One or the other. When it was stiff, it was harsh. And then when it was soft, it was too soft. There's not really a middle of the road setting. That works great everywhere for me. Same with Josh. As far, if you're a lower level rider, you don't need that big bottom out resistance or anything like that. So overall, we feel like it's an upgrade for the average Joe. It's not just for vet guys or novice guys. It's for like mid-intermediate guys, novice guys, and vet guys. The other thing that they changed is the maps. Map one and two are both vastly different from last year. We talked a lot about the American map that all the testers got together that they used last year. All the editors got together with Austria, KTM Austria, and they tried to figure out what map they liked best. And it was a super aggressive map they liked. Last year, they had a toned down version of that. This year, they went a little closer to that map for map two, and they really wanted to make the two maps really distinctly different. Map one, smooth, linear, but powerful, and then map two is super aggressive. For me, it was almost too aggressive, it got me tired, but if you wanted that power here now out of the corners, it was there. Map one, I say it's smooth, but it was also really powerful. I really didn't need to use the clutch. It revved out further the map too, and it was just overall easy to ride. So besides the mapping, the suspension, and these clamps, performance-wise, this is the exact same bike as the 2020 Husqvarna SE450. For all the details on that bike, we include the full test of that bike in the description below. And a few other things we might have missed about this bike is worth mentioning is a recluse clutch cover, and then we got this Pro Taper bar pad, which we really dislike. Then we had this two years ago, it moves around when you're riding, stuff like that. They make an upgraded one that we really like, this one, it's just kind of distracting. Other than that, check out the full write-up of this bike in the June issue of Motocross Action Magazine. And as always, go to motocrossactionmag.com for all your Supercross coverage, outdoor nationals, bike tests, product tests, everything you can think of is up there, so check it out. To stay up to date for all MXA's videos, hit that subscribe button now. And here's a few other videos to keep you entertained.